tested and then pushed into Plumed Castle. So Akame is going to be in the field of fire very quickly as we move over. OUG's Mike getting a hugely aggressive spawn over the likes of Bowdoz Action, but going to be coming in and Bowdoz Action going to get the opportunity to grab some loot for themselves. JT's PST just nearby as well. PST looking to pressure in here with the nunchucks. This is something I expect to see a lot more of this patch are the nunnies. Oh. This is something, uh, you know, the likes of Frostivus and a few other players have really been practicing in anticipation for this patch because the nunny's quite strong uh, during our new patch here. And we're going to see a huge fan coming out there onto PST doing a lot of damage. The F invested on Mike there. He's going to get the damage reduction to go through here. We will see the trigger come in. And this is why we see a lot of the nunnies come in, especially into the fan. It's a very safe pick there. But the no meter left. So J Team's PST has got to be very quick and very careful about how they engage this fight onto OUG's Mike Bowdoz action. Also looking to come in and capitalize on the elimination. PST trying to come in. Mike doing what Mike does best. Looking for for that armor swap. If you see, he's looping these guys around where he's able to loot here. Mike, very, very particular about being able to find those armor swaps so he can very quickly turn on the fights. He's going to use the fan to buy himself some distance. Unfortunately, there is an armor there for him to swap into, but he gets chased away. And very quickly, look, he's going to try to ba backtrack. Now he finds the opportunity to get a pot off, so he knows there's an armor there if he needs it. That's why we see Mike very quickly turn back towards this fight. He wants to take a full reset going to the fight with the opportunity to go in and take that armor swap if things go south for him. PST down below looking for a reset on their armor as well as we cut over to T's S Railgun and Jail's AS. Both of them going staff for staff here with the F being invested on the side of T's S Railgun. AS looking for the opportunity to come in. They will find it. There we go. They're going to re-grapple, but they miss the bump coming back in there off the left click from the staff. Railgun now going to uppercut into the zone, into the weapon swap, oh. and very quickly... Clean up that elimination on Jail's AS and take the Bloom. No surprise to see the Bloom not sticking behind. Now Mike in a poor position. Again, no way to get away from him as he gets re-grappled by Bowdoz Action. Locks him down into the combo, and we are going to see PST pick up that elimination there with the bow shot as well. T225 now trying to turn on to Action. Going to run right into that charge right click from the dual alleys. Action going to use the ult to iframe through some of that, but the freeze going to come through from T225 on to Action. Action, though, PST going to click up another elimination off of the third party and T225 in a really bad position now no dashes left to go in the infinite jungle down below and J Team's PST goes from one two to three just like that that was absolutely brutal from PST able to really do a beautiful turnaround there coming to the third party and then take the other kill absolutely clutch coming in from us as Arano right now has the golden star so if he actually gets the opportunity to play he'll probably see him do quite a lot of damage but that opportunity has quickly faded away he's gonna have to pop that ultimate fairly soon once again caught up in disguise pops the ultimate now gonna try and heal off he's just gonna break away does have to put some distance between them and frost of us they got that f coming up fairly shortly expect to see that one go come down any moment now they are gonna need it Instantly uses that F just to cleanse up a little bit more health for themselves. It's gonna be able to grab some purple halberds as well. So they are very, very scary right now. Just getting some healing off as Frost of Us now. A little bit too slow to kind of carry on, but Arano is just being absolutely schooled on by Frost of Us. He's just keeping him aerial at all points in this game. Even beats him to the top of this pillar. Just completely outmatching him at this point as uh, Arano. Has the better weapon loadout, but it's just not really getting the opportunity to use it. Finally, get some extra damage down there onto Frostivus. Frostivus is just trying to get the scale rush off. Isn't able to quite make that connection as he comes in, chasing forward, catches him with the uppercut. Is now just going to look to try and keep him in as close to an infinite as he could there. Does drop him as Arano going very, very low. Just keeping the pressure up. The staff is going to buy him a bit, a bit of space, but... Arano can't get to the top of this pillar quick enough as again Frostivus matches him up to the top is coming in for the scale rush they do catch each other there's the parry and the staff steal by Frostivus absolutely clean by Frostivus here he's able to pop that ult early comes in keeps the aggression up and is able to even though they're playing ring around the rosy they're in a really bad position to find the scale rush time and time again and even find the mid-air jump cancel into the parry there with the anticipation knowing that's what he needs to take control of the situation clean up the elimination just really clean stuff from Frostivus and most notably he does get that legendary staff 
off the rip here. That's absolutely huge, given that the Faria ult is damage is based off your weapon rarity. So for him, it's a huge advantage before heading into the uh, realm of Yangs, where you usually can't have a legendary weapon, but because of Podium being in play on Hollow Roth, sometimes you can get lucky and out of Podium, you can get uh, that legendary weapon. Frostivist not solving Podium, but killing the player who does Getting himself a huge advantage. We cut over to Wang Liang. Bao does action. Just trading blows here. Action looking to keep the pressure up here on Wang Liang. Wang Liang just a few percent away from the ultimate there, which might be enough for him to stay alive and potentially turn this fight on its head onto action. We do see the parry whiff come in from Bao does action, and Wang Liang very quickly takes control of the situation. He finds his opening. There's the ult. I don't think there's anything action can do if he gets frozen out here. He will find the huge charge. Left click off of that. The third party coming through means Wang Liang can't aggressively turn onto the fight and look to freeze Baudas action. So he just looks to go for the reset as these other players come in and Wang Liang can't even hope to compete there for the realm of Yang now, knowing that he's not going to have his ultimate. He does end the ultimate early. He's got a little bit of charge left back. He might be able to find it if he can live long enough inside the realm. But it is a huge risk. We're seeing him hiding out in the pot here. What a strat by Wang Liang. Just chilling inside here. But we will see the cannon shots start to come through. Going to make it hard for Wang Liang to stay there. But the cannon shot to actually go down onto PST, giving Wang Liang just enough time to take the reset as they come up, looking to find a scale rush here. They're just going to chill out 58% towards ultimate. I don't think they're going to head for that realm of Yang. They might look to fight a stragglers here who don't make it inside the realm and look to capitalize on something there. Gale is T225 looking to head into the realm of Yang just here as it's getting ready to spawn through. We're going to see who's heading in right now. Yeah, it looks like... Uh... PT5 is going to be one of those players. He's going up versus OUG's Mike inside this one. Has got the purple halberds. There's a fan in there as well. We know a favorite of a lot of these players since it came through. That's going to be, uh, two people are going to be getting themselves in right now is Mike. PT5 is going up toe to toe right now. Mike does have that purple armor. Is just going to get the slam down here on that ACOS. Finds himself in the isolated fight this time. Probably feeling a little bit more comfortable than when he's getting third partied earlier. Play this very, very slow tempo, not waiting for the opportunity yet, just dodging away on those Halberd strikes. Once again, only gets hit by a couple of them, doesn't get fully stacked onto, but Mike does lose a lot of HP. There's going to be the freeze burnt here by TT25, trying to keep that pressure up on... Barry comes out from Mike, he catches him up skyward, doing so much damage to TT25, does get the freeze down, and the staff does so much. Mike almost gets hit by the cannon, he's just about dodging away, but he can't heal up in time, he's looking for the slam down, the freeze doesn't quite connect, and there's the cannon shot from TT25. Holy moly, that was close. Super smart coming in there with the cannon from T225, able to clean up the elimination there. You can see the smile on his face. He wanted that elimination on the mic. So are Jails. AS going to come in here and throw the pillar down on the WBG Spider now, who's going to be feeling forced to, to move away from this fight with the Alliance's Frost of its nearby as well. Has got to keep it moving, but Frost of its going to come in onto the back shot of that as well. Spider taking some huge damage. He's going to be forced to invest the F. Now, Spider away from that Faria, but we're going to see a Bane's Breath uh, coming okay. in. And Alliance Frostum is able to clean up the elimination. He will take a hit from the Bane's Breath, but he's going to take the opportunity to stay where he's safe here, knowing that that Fairy Mech is going to be coming off cooldown very shortly. So he's going to be able to pressure onto the other player. Frostum picks up the elimination and continues to keep going. Back to OUG's Mike now, who's going to have to come out and find a Soul Bloom somewhere. And this is something I expect to see during this first set of the patch here, the players who are more typical of keeping a bloom in the back pocket, struggling just a little bit into the realm of Yang now, because I feel like they typically win those realms of Yang because they have that insurance policy and it makes you able to take those fights so confidently now that you don't have an insurance policy there's a little bit more threat looming on your head and we see you know a player like mike not quite able to clutch out his realm of yang now on the back but yet again but in a huge advantage here with the carousel into oh the up the grapple bump with the just corner blitzing of gg shaw locked in here shaw no place to go already invested the ultimate here and mike just giving him the business the tiger claws into the re carousel into the grapple bump in the corner oh. Not no. to go. Mike cleans it up, but he does find the bloom that he needs. He's not going to find any loot out of it, but absolutely huge, for, huge for OUG's Mike. That was that was ideal ACOS scenario. That was catch them, mm -hmm. corner them in a corner, and just keep them staggered. Absolutely beautiful there by Mike, and he's been having a rough game. 
It's nice to see him kind of make that bounce back as now Wang Liang with that debuff on chasing up into TT to five catches. PST as well though, so he's gonna find himself finding a fight versus two people. This third party could now start to prove a little bit difficult with the hang sword though. That's got a lot of reach and a lot of kind of tonal AoE coming in from that sword as PST Ooh. is gonna be forced into the armor swap, losing so much HP. Wang Liang keep the pressure up onto PST. Freeze goes a little bit wide there by TT5. He does look to get the kill. He takes the soul bloom from Wang Liang, so Wang Liang's not cleansed, but he finds a freeze onto TT5. Catching the damage on, but in comes AS as a potential third party. Wang Liang finds himself in danger, now trying to break away as he is taken down by TT5. Mike joins into this fight as well. The charge comes forward from TT5 as he's keeping the pressure up onto multiple people at once. Also trying to break away. AS goes down to the cannon fire from TT5. But Mike has the health advantage over TT5 at this point. And with the sword of the Halberds melting health bar. Mike is in this game. Here's, here's the thing, right? TT25 wanted to be eliminated there. He was so low. If he let that fight go any longer, he was in risk of losing his buff from the realm of Yang. He just lets Mike come in and clean that up because he just shot up from three eliminations to six. Absolutely huge for TT25. He comes in, he utilizes the buff. Mike gets a bloom out of it and an extra elimination, but I don't think it's really enough for Mike to gather the sort of momentum that TT25 has now. TT25 just needs to play for late game. With seven players left alive, I don't even think he risks heading into the next realm of Yang. We do see here a player with a bounty onto OUG's Mike looking to continue to keep the pressure of Mike going to back away from the situation. And I do believe it's Shaw who has that bounty onto OUG's Mike. So Mike just looking to get away and take the full reset here. He's going to cut back to a replay. Wang Liang versus Alliance's Frostivus inside the realm of Yang. A huge parry from Frostivus. Wang Wang Liang, though, with the freeze, able to get away there from it. But Frostivus, yet again, with the read, the huge follow-up. He doesn't get the pillar follow-up, but it doesn't matter. He finds instant control of the neutral again and just puts the business to Wang Liang. The old staff bonk. <laughs> That's what we call that one. Frostivus, honestly, a very, very fast one. We are seeing the, uh, the Roma Yang spawning up fairly soon. Who's going to be jumping in is the real question. You can see the Akane, Arano, and Frostivus. I believe it's going to be a Mora's Blessing, yeah. They are just waiting around this one for the moment. Definitely playing this a little bit more slow. I say slow tempo. There's not many. There's only seven players left, and we're not even on the second round with Yang yet. So this has actually been a very, very fast-paced game so far. Mike is going to do himself a little bit of shopping. Um, grabbing himself some goodies. Everybody's got pretty good armor. Um... Which inclines me to believe that the, the change to the shop did happen. I need to get this confirmed, but uh, you can buy armor from the shop. Or that was what I believe was coming live on this patch. I'm assuming from the fact that everyone is rocking purple armor, that's probably the case. Okay, apart from Akame and Arano and Railgun. Cool. Just prove me wrong, guys. Just prove me wrong. Thank you, Jesus. I saw what you were doing. Uh, as we come in over here, these players looking to come in. Try to make something happen. Arana just wants to stay in the circle here. He clearly wants to go ahead and there we go. Find himself an upgrade, which he will very quickly into a couple purple weapons and the purple uh, armor that he desperately needed there. These players all trying to fight it out. We will see uh, the pillar being invested as so many of these players now just scatter like ants, man. They All of them were in such a tight spot. Now Railgun, though, the only person who doesn't really benefit from this situation, just trying to stay away from here. As we take a look at the scoreboard, I mean, TT225 in such a great position heading into the late game here. He has six eliminations. The closest player to him right now is Alliance's Frostivist. TT25 can kind of just kick back and look to play for late game now, given how many eliminations he has under his belt. And he did it with that huge safety net, right? He goes in and he aggressively takes a fight and finds three eliminations at Plumed Castle with the safety net of that buff let's mike pick up the elimination on him so that he can go back and respawn safely somewhere and not have to fight out a really bad situation that he find himself in because he played so aggressively but you get to play aggressively like that when you have the safety net of that buff we're gonna come over oh now to arano and OUG's mike coming in arano finding some huge damage there some bow shots coming in as well from gg shot shot able to find more damage follow up there on the fan mike gets a parry there huge for him on the tg25 can use 
use it to try to break away. A couple of these players want to keep giving chase there because that parry, not enough to make T225 the target. Mike still not able to get a full pot off here. As we see Shaw coming in from the top, he will find the F, which means he's going to get that damage reduction here for the next couple of seconds, but will it be enough to make a difference for him? As we see these other players finally turn on to one another. UG's Mike going to be in a good spot to get a reset here. He does get the reset. Kaylee is T225 going to come to the backside looking to do the same. Mike looking to potentially find the scale rush. So T225 just going to break away from the situation and not give Mike the opportunity to set up for it here as he looks to turn back on to Mike who's giving chase to yet another player. The cannon shots coming in doing a ton of damage to both players yet again. We're going to continue to see T225 put in work with the cannon I assume as he's been able to find so much success. Now he's looking to go for a huge grapple bump there onto Arano. GG Shaw not really giving him the opportunity to continue it but OUG Mike coming in, going to keep the pressure up, giving TT5 the time to find a reset and continue to come in with the cannon. We're going to see everybody going airborne there off of the huge uh, gust of wind there. Now Mike on the back foot coming down to the bottom. Doesn't want to try to pressure up into all these zips. Topside will find a huge F investment there. Get a lot of value out of it. Unfortunately, he misses the re-grapple there, so he's not going to be able to stop Arano from finding the pot that he was looking for. And these two zips really just oh. try to stick together. The Thorny Roller coming into play. GG Shaw not quite walking into it. Mike almost walking into it there. Arano coming back in with the fan there. Mike going to keep it going there. Goes for the parry. Doesn't quite find it. Will invest the F. Doesn't get the full knockback, but will find himself the damage reduction off of it. Thorny Roller inside the zone for just a little longer. Many of these players looking to break away. Do not want to deal with it. Everybody who's in this final zone is here right now. This, this is just like a big clown fiesta fight for it as Mike's trying to find the scale rush off onto Arano. He's keeping the pressure up on him. He's really bullying Arano this game. Seems to know he was, this is Arano from the, who won that last game. Definitely trying to find the kill onto them. Forcing them low as Mike does have the F, does have the ultimate available to him. And Arano, once again, another target of his is just going to bop him into the zone and get a bunch more damage dealt. But Arano is actually going to use this opportunity to use the low ground and escape away from the action so he can get a full reset off. Mike gets a lot of damage onto Shah. Shah could just be the lobby's bullied now as he's in some serious danger. Is able to break for now, but gets himself still caught out with healing up thanks to his ultimate as everybody is chasing onto him. The cannon shot's coming in. Shah is being hunted. Everyone knows he's burnt his ultimate. Everyone knows he's low HP. They're just desperately chasing onto Shah as the whole lobby smells that blood in the water. Mike definitely the one to start all of this action quite happy able to pop the bell spot where everybody is on the map and it's just gonna play this a little bit more chill now so it looks like they have been able to break away shah has got that full reset off but still is gonna be altless and mike is doing so much work with the pole sword onto shah shah pops the f but mike with the pole sword is just not letting that healing even come through massive amount of damage there from mike Unable to really chase on, but Shard low HP. Who's going to be able to secure that kill? It was Frostibus with the pistol, taking it away from Mike. It looks like he's just going to break away. Railgun actually jumps up into Mike's area as Mike just oh. flattens him with a pole sword. And now he's turned to TT25, looking for a potential scale rush onto him. Isn't actually going to get that opportunity. Just doing a bit of a... Still a little bit of Karen uh, stealing. <laughs> I don't really know what to call it. Pillaging. <laughs> yeah, just doing a little bit of looting off of the courses here, and we That's just like word. that we go. Yeah, just like that we go from seven to five. Mike, there. I don't think Akame expected that whatsoever. That swing to do so much health. I don't think uh, he anticipated the legendary pole sword just to come through with the overhead and just one clip him there, which is exactly what we see happen. So now down to five players left alive. And this is the thing, if you notice, it's the zippings that are getting heavily kind of targeted out of this lobby. Nobody wants to deal with them uh, in the current patch in a final zone scenario. They just want these zippings completely gone. I do believe EWG's Arano um, might be our last zipping here in the lobby. So they are gonna be extremely targeted out here and it's gonna be a feels bad scenario for them as Mike and TT25 continue to keep the pressure up here. They are at 70% on the old. They've got a safety net, a huge oh. parry coming in and setting up the scale rush as well, waiting for it. Arano getting in the opportunity to pop the ultimate there at the 70%, gonna get them some healing that they desperately need, flipping it on to Mike. But these players, Mike wanting to keep the pressure up here. He knows he needs to turn the attention back onto the zip if he wants to stay alive here. And sure enough, these players, again, looking to keep chasing Arano. They know that they do not want to go to a final circle where they have to fight a zip in a heal off scenario. Yes, there is heal cut 
from the zone, but it just it puts Zip in such a dominating position uh, over these other players in the final circle where they can just play keep away and still live. TTP5 looking to find yet another elimination here. They're on Arano. Arano in a really bad situation here. I don't know what their F situation is, but they definitely are nowhere near their ult. And now Mike going to be showing up as well. And we're going to see TTP5 just trying to keep that pressure up. Another Spirit Well going to be coming through. But they everybody just wants to play keep the chase up onto Arano. Arano with that F investing, getting a little bit of passive here. Healing, but now it's on cooldown for the next 10 seconds. They have been able to find a little bit of uh, some angle breaking here. Oh my goodness, no, but it's going to be TG25 who shows up and keeps Arano from being able to get the pot off. Again, the entire lobby just focused here, trying to get the zip out of the lobby, and I can't really blame them, Jake. This is the last thing you want to deal with. Frostivus, TG25, or sorry, Akame is uh, from 521 going to come over here and go ahead and pop that spirit well, get themselves some much needed loot to come in, and now continue to keep the chase up as well. I don't think Arano has been given a single moment to breathe as they continue to be uh, traded back and forth between all the players of this lobby. Frostivus and Akame just on the backside. TG25, I think Arano might have finally broken away from the likes of OUG's Mike and Kale's T25 here. Yeah, Arano gonna finally be back almost to that ultimate here with a full reset under their belt. Against all odds, they're able to just keep this movement going here. Very similar to Plumed Castle where they have all of these different locations that they can go to break away. And look, they're gonna go down into the little tunnel here just to play some passive gaming here. Mike gonna come in though with that gold pole sword and Arano says, no, you can go ahead and evict me because I want nothing to do with that pole sword in this combined space. Well, Mike really doesn't care. Whoa. He's just bullying away. Arano forced to use the F there. Chasing actually onto Mike. He maybe found a bit of a turnaround. They found themselves on the edge of the Bane's Breath. So this could get a little bit dangerous for Arano. They may actually use the Bane's Breath as a way to surf through and reset away. Arano playing a dangerous game, but I think it should pay off for him as Mike quite happily also playing around the edge of that Bane's Breath. A lot of these players willing to surf that as it is actually dead center of the zone this Vayne's Breath as well. So very, very rough. It's TTT5. Just seeing if they can find a couple of shots onto Mike. Mike almost eating a vein shot there, but it's going to be able to uh, head off away from all of the action. And Mike has really got a bone to pick of Arano. And right now, Arano is the least likely person to be challenging Mike for a uh, for an MVP for this game. At the moment, it's TTT5 with those six kills, but Frostimus also has four as well. So uh, Mike probably wants to really turn their attention to one of those guys over over poor Arano. I mean, uh, the big thing here is, again, uh, nobody wants to go to a final circle and have to, no. to fight a zip there. It's, it's just a, a, an abysmal scenario to be in. So that's where we're going to see Arano keep getting basically lobbied out here. They are the last zip in the lobby. So it's not like, you know, you can trade that attention onto another zipping ying and potentially confuse other players about which zip is which. You are the last zip here. So these players are going to continue to just have to keep the pressure up and try to eliminate them so that they don't have to worry about them in the end. Arano, fortunately, has just been doing a really good job of playing keep away. You can actually see, I do believe they're crouched in a bush on the... Oh, no, they're not in a bush, but they are crouched on the backside here, just not wanting to give away that position. I don't think Akami just saw them there either. So a lot of these players playing very safe because I think they're looking for that zipping, right? They do not want to pressure into another fight here and potentially end up getting third partied by the zipping and giving them the opportunity to find another elimination before they're going. But it's going to be Frostivus who finds Arano and is just taking shots at Arano. Arano, a little sleepy at the keyboard there, didn't move. Eats three different shots from Frostivus there uh, before I think they realize that they're taking damage and need to move away. So Arano finds another place to go hide. But Frostivus knows right where they are. Arano, you are just going to continue to get focused out here. As soon as Arano gets shoved around this corner and Mike sees that zipping, I have every feeling that Mike is just going to immediately turn on to Arano here. There it is. Oh, Yuji's Mike on the hunt. He sees the zipping. He knows he doesn't want to deal with it in the final circle here. As an Akus is going to lock him into a little bit of the corner here with the step. Goes for the jabbing. Doesn't quite find it there. A huge soul jade like we talked about before. Being one of those soul jades you can kind of use to counter out uh, that burst damage to heal uh, keep them from being able to overheal uh, through your damage when their ults activated here. So Mike really doing everything they can to kind of target these zips out of the lobby. Going to get knocked away here. Rana going to go in, but Mike able to just break away there. That heal cut coming through almost instantly. Mike wasn't even in the zone for uh, less than two seconds, I do believe. Arano topside yet again. Finding a reset, but down to a single shield pot 
left in their back pocket and there's not going to be anything else to loot here until another player dies. This has been picked absolutely clean. So Arano cannot find themselves in another engagement here or they will be down to no shield pots. And that is a very poor place to be heading into the final zone. Yeah, it does feel like this game is starting to slow down, though. We had a very, very explosive almost end to this game. As Arano being zoned off. It's just going to jump back through the window. Gets caught Ooh. out by Mike. Eats a whole bunch of damage. Just forces that F immediately. Jumps into the zone to try and zone Mike away. Mike is just going to keep the pressure up onto Arano, though. Bops them back into the zone. Again, playing the scale rush game. Moving away from Arano. Arano. Just going to heal up mid-air. Mike actually taking quite a lot of zone damage here. Just keeps running into it accidentally. As uh, Arano keeping the pressure oh. off. Oh, he just turned TT25 onto Arano as Mike turns into a plant. It's just going to heal up. Arano almost could become in the gardener, though. Mike is able to break away. Arano actually becomes a plant himself as TT25 finds him. <laughs> as they do look to try and get some damage off onto Arano. Got some weeds <laughs> to take care of. This is the most... Silly thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Where where's the cannon that? Yeah, I was about to say this is earlier. like <laughs> cannon dream, rupture gale orb cannon dream, man. Yeah, yeah, because none of these physical attacks, because they start from inside the bot, can go out and vice versa. Uh, if you had something like a soul slash uh, and a katana, you could potentially position it to start inside the pot and potentially catch these players up but i think tt25 is either out of repair kits or ditched the cannon because they would definitely be on the cannon here just lobbing shots into these two players unfortunately they are just holding the space here with a long sword making it very difficult for either mike or arano to get out of these two pots that they went into to find that reset but the zone very arano has to break first. coming in yeah arano has got to come up top side tt25 still holding the zone here potentially trying to go to mike mike just gonna find the tiny of corner there on the pot, able to find a scale rush and go airborne. He's going to look to utilize these grapples to stay up in the air here. We are going to see Arano and Akame oh, just get word. bodied out into the zone. Mike finally going to get grappled out from his position on the high ground. Going to grapple into T2 to 5 to go airborne yet again. We're going to see two mechs coming through. The Justina going to use their dashes to come up. Going to lock out Frostivus here and Akame looking to find it again. Akame going to Mike's get ulted. locked down there. Mike has ulted. He is in there. Arano does have the ult active here and this is why you don't want to zip. Oh my word! Here in the end. Oh! Frosty Boy comes through and find some eliminations. Mike finds another one, but nobody can take it away from KLA's T225, who finds his seventh elimination of the game. Absolutely huge coming in. KLA's T225 is going to find his first MVP of the day here in game number two.